My buddy Cooper let me borrow this GLINet Flint 2 home router so that way I could introduce it to you guys as a hopefully more cost effective solution as opposed to all of the TP Link stuff we're looking for. This is an all in one solution so that way you don't have to buy a power over Ethernet switch and all these other devices. And on the plus side, it, open, it runs open source software. This runs OpenWRT and you can, of course, flash your own software on here if you choose not to use the already installed open firmware. OpenWRT firmware that's on here. And probably one of the neater things that's gonna be most interesting to all of you guys is that on the rear of the device is that it has two WAN ports, two 2.5 gigabit E WAN ports more specifically. And the second WAN port can be configured to be used on your LAN. So that way you can have a 2.5 gigabit port um, on your LAN that can go to a switch if you have a 2.5 gigabit capable switch or you can plug it directly into a server or maybe your desktop computer. So if you have you know, fiber internet or something that goes over one gigabit per second, you can maximize your throughput with that extra port. And of course it does have four other one gigabit ports that are available to it on the rear. That's pretty awesome. And I would say pretty common, you know, even something as old as this has four ports on the rear of it. Of course, there's a reset button on the rear and it does have a DC 12 volt barrel connector on the rear as well. The power supply itself supplies up to 12 volts or four amps and 48 watts of power, as well as provides the unlocking and relocking of different connectors should you be traveling. The power adapter's cord length is about three feet, four inches, or about a meter long, which might be a little short for some people. On the side of the router is a USB 3.0 port where you can plug in your USB cellular modem, or you can even tether your phone via USB, and of course attach like a hard disk, SSD, or other um, mass storage device via USB. So you can use this to access data on your network that is stored on that USB device. As previously mentioned, this is a Wi-Fi 6 router and it does support DFS channels on the five gigahertz band, which is a great feature. So if you are pushing a lot of data over Wi-Fi and you have the 2.5 gigabit port connected to a switch, you're gonna be able to push some serious data over Wi-Fi, which is really cool. Other hardware items worthy of notation is the fact that this has a MediaTek quad-core CPU that runs at two gigahertz. It has eight gigabytes of eMMC memory, as well as one gigabyte of DDR4 RAM. For those of you wondering about the LED on the front, this actually can be disabled in software. It is not RGB, and it also has the included feature of being able to schedule a on and off time for the LED also. I thought that was pretty cool, so I had to make sure I included it in this video. Well, I started to take this apart, but it looks like underneath the sticker is one more screw that is underneath it, and I could feel a dimple for where it would be underneath the sticker, but because this doesn't belong to me, I'm just not gonna take it apart and show you what the guts look like, but there are pictures online that give you an idea of what the internals are like. So we're not gonna try and void any warranties here or anything like that, although technically it shouldn't void any warranties. So I'm gonna put these screws back in and I guess we'll just jump into the hardware. I mean software, I keep saying hardware, Har software. We'll jump into the har the software. Okay, I almost did it again. We'll jump into the software, the software, the software, the, the software. There are a ton of software features that we could talk about, but we'll spend a little bit of time talking about only a few. The first of which being ad blocking support with AdGuard Home that's baked into the router. That's really cool. So you don't really have to do anything additional on your end, except of course, you know, turn it on. And then there's also parental controls. So you can even further define uh, allow lists or disallow lists for certain web traffic. And what's even more cool on top of that is the that this thing can act as a VPN server as well as a VPN client. So you can use OpenVPN, WireGuard, TailScale, whatever, whatever kind of VPN service you want. And that's all baked into this. And of course you can install additional VPNs as well if you'd like. And speaking of which, OpenWRT allows you to install plugins or packages for things like TCP dump, iPerf, Tmux for your SSH sessions, and a hell of a lot more. So this thing comes pretty packed out of the box. And you can of course just install your own OpenWRT software or whatever software you want on this if you don't like the baked in one. Moving on to the part that you guys probably care most about, and that's the bandwidth test. Now, normally I would mount my access points on the ceiling in the centrally most located area in my home. However, I think this device is kind of meant to be more on 
uh, somebody's desk or near other networking equipment, maybe by where their TV service also comes into the house. So I mounted mine underneath my TV and it is still mostly centrally located, which is good for these tests. And I did stand in different positions in the kitchen, living room, and all the rooms as I normally would and did my bandwidth test. So I think that will give us a realistic idea of what to expect as we look at these bandwidth results. During the several days of testing, we consumed about 0.24 kilowatt hours of electricity. And then it usually peaked around 6.6 .6 watts of power, but usually idles more closely to 6.3 watts or 6.2 watts of power. Other companies need to take note of just how simple it is to set this unit up as a VPN client. Just take a look at how easy this process was as I use a Molvad VPN WireGuard configuration and literally just drag and drop it into my client and I'm off to the races. I even managed to pull off a little speed test just to see what I could expect out of this unit. Now I'm blaming the slowness of the speed on Mulvad's servers, not so much of the VPN client running on this unit. I do have a one gigabit connection here and I'm only getting 500 megabits. So I assume that this is something on Mulvad's end and not actually with my unit itself or the VPN server client configuration itself on the unit. Originally, when my friend Cooper was telling me about this device, I didn't care at all. But after putting my hands on it and touching it and going through the software and its hardware, I will generally say that given my extremely low expectations, I am thoroughly impressed with this unit and its capabilities. And I think that just means I'm out of touch with other similar products that have been out on the floors or the shelves for quite some time now. And I'm curious to see what other products in this same category also offer that may meet or beat this, but I doubt they'll beat this product in particular. So whatever the case, I think this is an excellent product. Um, I would definitely think if you're interested in an all-in-one solution or something that can be turned into an access point, repeater or whatever later, this may be a great option for you, especially if you can find it under $180. So if I didn't have my lab, I think this is what I'd be buying. <laughs>